The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, one of the most feared men of South Florida and leader of a notoriously violent gang, the Latin Syndicate, Rene Martinez, now helps others get free. And I go into I go into ghettos and the projects and the prisons. You. you know, I came from nothing. I came from the gutter. I came from gangbang and I seen murder my whole life. So I know that if God didn't allow me to die back then when I was with the devil, I know he has me here <laughs> for a specific mission. Yeah. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. Tammy Trent is Hello. with me. And Tammy, you weren't here about five-ish years ago, seven years ago when, when Renee Martinez was first on the show, were you? No, I wasn't. But I'm going to tell you, thinking about the show today, I went back and started Googling oh, a bunch yeah. of stuff. And I am beyond excited that he's here with us today. Well, and I'm yeah. excited for you to be with us. If you haven't heard his story, it's going to bless you. In fact, I was telling Renee before the program that I, I still see comments on YouTube from people that have watched us over the years it's just having an impact and man what god does in our lives just the ripple effects just keep going out forever so yeah. glad you're here and renee martinez welcome back to life today thank you for having me all right now i know i set that up a little bit you've told the story um, uh, my parents actually were on on the set but a lot of people haven't heard where you came from to appreciate all that god's done in your life briefly walk us through how you grew up and got to a place that was really dark. Amen. Well, see, growing up, me, I didn't have a dad, a father figure in my life. So my mom back then, she was into drugs and she was into this dark uh, religion called Santeria. And I remember being about five years old and they were killing these chickens and they were pouring the blood down the kids' heads. And I knew I was next, so I ran and tried to hide under a couch. And they grabbed me from under the couch and they stuck me in this bathtub where there was a goat and they sacrificed the goat and they poured the blood all the way down my body. Mm. Immediately, it opened some kind of door in my life. I started to see demons. They held me down in my sleep. It, it was like, it was just crazy for me to be at such a young age and to experience all this. So. My mom was always getting high as well. She was on drugs. So I got led to the streets at a very early age and found family on the streets. Nine, 10 years old. We're stealing cars, we're breaking into houses, we're spray painting on walls. And one night I was 14 years old and we stole a car. We got on a high speed chase and we're flying through red lights. The next thing you know, my whole life blacks out. I woke up weeks later with all my bones broken. Mm. I was facing mass slaughter charges. I had to learn how to walk again. And I had to learn my lesson. I went right back to the streets. Started to gang bang again, started to rob again. Next thing you know, I get caught up with attempted murder charges at 16. Wow. And during this time, after that, I got sent to a facility, then I got out. And I remember right before I caught those charges, we were in a situation where me and my mom were homeless. And my mom was so depressed that she tried to commit suicide for the second time in her life. And I found her half dead. So what did I do? I ran, I grabbed the phone, I called 911. They came and picked her up. She goes to the hospital, comes out the hospital, and ends up getting invited to a church retreat. Her whole life changed. I'm talking about three days. Her whole life changed. She comes back talking about Jesus to me. And I'm like, this lady's crazy. What you mean, right. Jesus? So I didn't understand because I was used to, you know, the witchcraft and her getting high. So I, I just ran from God my whole life. And by the time I was 17, I became the leader of one of the most notorious, biggest gangs in Miami-Dade County. And I just ran them streets and I was just lost my whole life. Many nights I found myself fighting for my life half dead, beat down one time, left for dead, blood in my brain. I've had guns jamming my head. They've had hits on me. I've been in cars riddled with bullets multiple times. And that was my whole life, in and out of jail, hospitals, funerals. It was like a normal thing, a normal life. And it's like, I never learned my lesson. And I'm gonna fast forward, 2000 and, 2003, I, I, I had a friend. He kept inviting me to this church. He's like, oh, come on, let's go to this church. Long story short, I'm like, man, I'm not with that church stuff, but he ends up convincing me. 
So I walk into this church, I'm sitting down, and the pastor, he was preaching on gangs. And for the first time in my life, I felt God tugging at my heart. Because throughout my whole life, after my mom tried to commit suicide, all she was doing was praying for me. Mm. You know, so God heard her prayers because, man, I'm in this church now and I'm feeling God tugging at my heart. And I'm like, man, why do I feel like this? And I didn't understand. And at the end, he, he called people up for prayer. My friend hits me on the shoulder. He's like, come on, let's go up there. So I'm walking up and it's like, it wasn't, it was like I was walking, but it wasn't me. Mm. I don't know how to explain it. And as I'm getting closer to the front, I'm balling my fist up and I'm, I'm clenching myself hard. And I'm like, I ain't soft because I felt like I was mm-hmm. going to cry. I'm like, I ain't soft. I ain't soft. And I just broke down crying like a baby. And then two, three days later, I ran from God because I didn't know how to let that image go. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I was the leader of a gang. I had all this rank in Miami. I was calling shots. I was doing so much that I just didn't know how to let that image go. Yeah. A year later, I met this guy named Kimbo Slice, and they were doing bare knuckle fights in Miami. So I'm like, one of my friends uh, was fighting for him, and I'm like, man, I want to show them what I got, man. Talk to him for me. And I ended up going to the backyard, knocked the first guy out in seven seconds, and I just kept fighting and winning. And my name got so big in the underground bare knuckle circuit that Telemundo came and they wanted to do a story on my life wow. in Spanish. And they said, we want you to become a professional MMA fighter. And I'm like, I ain't never trained. I said, if you pay for my training, I'll, I'll fight. Like, and they paid for my training. Six months later, I'm fighting professional. And with six months of training, wow. we wow. jumped in a cage, fought a guy from Thailand uh, who had 127 fights. I beat him and it's like my name just kept yeah. getting bigger and bigger. I started a, a gangster rap label because some of my friends rapped and I said, we real gangsters. I says, we could rap, we could spit this because we really lived this. That was my mentality. Mm -hmm. The devil had me so blind, so blind. I said, we're going to make all these millions. You know, I was so blinded by the things of the world, man. So I I was connected with celebrities. I had the money, I had the fame, I had all that. But I was so empty inside Mm -hmm. and I was mad at the world. I had so much rage inside of me because growing up without a dad and without a father figure, I just had so much anger in me. And this one night, I was in in a garage, and I felt the demon of death calling me. For the first time in my life, I thought about hell. Other times I left my house, I would be like, man, I wonder if I'm gonna make it back home, but I didn't care. I didn't care. And it's like this one night, it's like I had a spiritual awakening. For the first time in my life, I thought about hell. And that's when the Lord spoke to me. And he spoke to me. It wasn't like a loud, audible voice in the sky. It was something within me. And he said, I spared you for such a time. Either you come now or I'm going to remove my hedge off you. Mm. My whole life flashed before my eyes. Mm. And I surrendered it all to the Lord. And I remember after that, I'm walking down the street to feed the homeless. I just wanted to get back because God saved me from so much. I was homeless at one time. So I'm walking to feed the homeless. And there's a guy in the corner with a big Jesus shirt on. And I'm like, man, I like your shirt, homie. That's what I said. I like your shirt, homie. (laughs) Just like that. He's like, praise God. He said, where you going? I said, I'm going to go feed the homeless. We got the food on the other side of the block. He came with me. And when he started to preach the word, I felt the spirit of God speaking out his mouth. And he told me, brother, you must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And April 10, 2016, I'm in South Beach, Miami, Florida, and I went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And when I came out that water, he got, got filled with the Holy Ghost. I've never been the same. I've never been the same. He just put his word in me now, and and, and it's like I just go from state to state, prison to project, everywhere, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's this this all I'm going to do for the rest of my life. What year was that? 2016? That was 2016, April 10th. Your life was transformed My whole life was transformed forever. You've never looked back. I never looked back. Did he break you then also, the anger that you felt in your life? See, everything, everything. It's like I know for a fact that I was controlled by a demon. I know it. And the day I went down in water, as I was walking to the water, I was talking to the Lord Mm. from the inside of myself. I'm like, Lord, remove all these things from me. I don't want them no more. 
and he heard me. He, 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 it says he hears a true broken and contrite heart. I would truly repent it from the bottom I, with, a, with a true godly sorrow. And when I went down in water, I came out that water. I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I started to learn that word. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I ain't never been the same. <laughs> so he, you, know what, you know what I, I love yeah. about seeing you again here is, is that the, the Renee Martinez we called you Level because yeah. that was your street name. Yes, sir. But you don't go by that anymore because no, God's given you a new mm -hmm. identity. New, yeah, new, new name. Life, new, new life, new life, new identity. But yes. What's happened since then? Holly, just going for it since that day. I've gone to Los Angeles. I've gone to Atlanta. I've gone to New York, Philadelphia. It's just like the Lord sends me to these spots, and I go in there. And I go into I go into ghettos and the projects and the prisons, you. you know. I came from nothing. I came from the gutter. I came from gangbang, and I seen murder my whole life. So I know that if God didn't allow me to die back then when I was with the devil, I know He has me here <laughs> for a specific mission, yeah. you know. And, and, and it's like, it's just by the power of the Holy Spirit that I could do this. It ain't even me, you know. And I just I just walked in in a prison. It was actually over here in Texas, and the guy was telling me because they see my documentary, and he's like, "Man, you give me so much hope. You give me so much hope to see that if God did this for you, He could do this for me." And I was like, "Wow, you know, like what a blessing." Building I'm, back the walls of hope. Building back the walls of hope, brick by brick, line yes. upon line. Something I would not be able to do, Renee. You know, I, I mean, it's within me. Yes. But God has called you for such a time as this to go into places that I don't know if I'd survive. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hope so, but I'm so grateful Amen. for mighty men of God whose lives have been transformed and you are going into the darkest places to the people that almost seemed un seem unreachable. Yes. But God is using you, mighty man of God, and I'm sure Hallelujah. after every transform life. It must give you something to go like, I am right where God wants me to be. Hallelujah. I'm gonna keep, yes, I'm going to keep going. Jesus, I am yes. not going to stop. God has given you a voice and an authority in that yes. voice to change the world around you. Amen. Grateful for that. Amen. And haven't you started a ministry as well? Yes, I started a ministry. It's called Jesus Christ Street Ministry. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and, 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 yes. and straightforward. And you know, yeah, straight up, because it says Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So I'm like, man, I do street ministry, Jesus Christ street ministry, it's simple, <laughs> yeah, you know? I, I had a car wash van and uh, I was going to sell the van and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this a church on wheels. We're going to go <laughs> preach the gospel in this thing. And we just drive everywhere in there. All the ghettos in Miami, all the way to New York, all the way to Cali, everywhere. Well, let, me, let me ask you this. Um, you had some, some family. Yes, sir. What, what's happening with your family relationships? My mother's on fire for the Lord, you know, yeah. my wife, so I baptized her, oh, okay. you know, and, and they're, getting, they're getting fed. They see uh, my life, the, the life that I live, we are living epistles. I got to be an example of yes. what Christ yeah. was, yeah. you know? That's right. Sometimes we want to reach certain people in our families and we can't, but your life, without even you saying nothing, your life will preach to them, that's you right. know? Because that's what it's all about. You know, it ain't about the man just getting up there and preaching a sermon. Who are you when you alone? That's right. You know, who are you when no one is looking? That's How right. do you treat your animals? How do you treat your family? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. They yeah. got to see Christ in you. Uh, I, 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 and I ask because I, I know God, we have a God who loves to restore. Yes, sir. Uh, and our relationship with him, our relationship with others, you got a whole new family now, though, on, yeah. on the streets in on a lot of street. cases still. Yes, sir. What, what's happened with people that have come to Jesus through your your ministry? Oh, what? man, we fellowship, we gather. We got we got a spot in Miami called Key Biscayne. It's right by the water. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing these revivals every uh, once a month. And I'm talking about so many people are coming and getting baptized. Deliverance is taking place. It's, it's only by the power of God. That's it. Amen. Is that your yes. mission? Like when you see your life five years from now, where do you see Renee and your family five years from now? I just see us continue to grow. Yeah. See, I got a vision to build even like a, a community. Yes, I wonder A about community that. like 10 acres, right? Okay. And, and build a little community in it and to bring all the people who don't got nothing but really want change, mm -hmm. really want the Lord and come in and let's build, let, let's, let's start this. Let, let's, let's build back the walls of hope like you said. That's Hallelujah. right. Hallelujah. Build it, transform lives, yes. teach them the word of God, teach give them, the them tools to go yes. back out into the community and do something with their so, lives. So we, we preach, we reach, we teach, we mend and send. Amen. So yeah. 
Fresh what, do you, what do you do with the people who don't receive you? Because I'm guessing, especially, I mean, in some of these areas. Yeah, sometimes they don't receive you. you yeah. Know, sometimes. But, but you know that, that what they may be saying and yeah. necessarily revealing what's going on inside of them, right? Yeah. They put on walls. They put up fronts. Yep. A lot of times people put on fronts. One time I was in the ghetto and, and you know, the guy was like, yeah, he started crying. The guy was broken. And he was like, yeah, I, I could receive the Lord, you know, but what I'm going to do when I go back home and my mama's on crack and there ain't no food in the fridge, how am I going to get my money, you know? And I'm like, he, he's like, he's expressing himself to me. And I said, brother, all things are possible through Jesus Christ, bro. Like, you know, I gave it all up. I had, and, and I came to the point where I was, that's the only way I knew how to make money was fighting, uh, professional because before that I was robbing I was doing all the stuff that the world does when you're in the streets you know and uh I said God amen he's opening doors for me now it's it's all through faith we got to have faith we might go through the storm but Jesus is on the boat <laughs> he's on the boat yeah he's on the boat with us Never alone. It says Matthew 7, 24 says a wise man builds his house upon a rock. Yep. And when them storms come and that wind blows and the bills come and all these problems arise, it says you won't fold, you won't fall because you built up on a rock, on a solid foundation. What's the biggest storm you faced right. since coming to Christ? I've had guys now get in my face in the streets and, sure. you know, curse me out. Wow. And just to be able to walk away is so... It feels so good, you know? <laughs> first time a guy pulled up next to me in a car, cursing me out, and that was the first time that had happened to me when I came to Christ. And I just grabbed my steering wheel and I drove away praying. Mm. And I was like, wow, I was able to overcome this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What would you have done before? I would have took his whole head off. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but that man died, you know? Yes. Yeah, but, but that's, that's what I would have did, you know? Mm. You know? And, and I thank God that, that I'm a new creation in Christ, yeah. you know? So here's, here's, yeah. here's my question, because, you know, a lot of people that watch, especially the Christian television, I mean, this program will be on social media and some other places, too, or you never know who's going to see it. But a lot of people who are watching the program now, yes, they have a, a son, a grandson, maybe a grand, you know, daughter or granddaughter who they don't have any hope for. Mm. They think, man, I, I don't, you know. Uh, they're in the world. Yes. The world's got them. They may have addictions. They may be living a violent lifestyle. And they're watching this going, there might be hope. Mm. Yes. What do you say to that, that parent or grandparent who's been praying for that child for so long and, it, and they're just on the edge of losing hope? Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying because that's my mom never stopped praying. You know, when, when I remember she told me I would pray that your daughter would just get to see you one more year every time because she thought I wasn't going to live. She says, there's no way that I thought you was going to live, but she never stopped praying. She said she never stopped praying. So we just got to keep that faith. Yes. Yeah. That's the only way. That's so good. And you know, if you've got someone in your life that, that you want someone to pray with you for that person, we've got a telephone number, a prayer line, just, just call and, and you can agree with somebody in prayer, maybe for that, that son, the grandson, your granddaughter, whatever. If you want prayer, use that number because we, Life Outreach International, you know, we, we love the stories, Tammy, like yeah, this, you definitely. know, what God yes. can do. Yes. Situation that looks like it's completely beyond hope. Someone who looks like the devil's got them or they're in a bad situation that they're never going to get out of. But we say, you know what? We serve a God who's bigger yes. than any yes, situation out there. And there are a lot of people mm. that are in bad situations right now. Mm. And we want to be the, the hands and feet of Christ and reach into these areas as you've seen, Tammy, and Amen. do something amazing. Amen. You can be a part of it. Yes. Watch this and you'll see how. The threat most often materializes out of the blue targeting those who are innocent and unaware. It appears friendly at first, but inevitably, its true colors are revealed. Or like the killer, 
With one final maneuver, the trap is sprung, and human traffickers have snared yet another victim. Pooja was only 12 years old when this nightmare became her reality, linking her to countless others like her who are approached, drugged, threatened, and abducted before anyone even notices. Fortunately for Pooja, rescue life was ready. Our ministry partners at the border intercepted her captors and pulled her from their grasp before she was sold into slavery. You are safe. Everything's going to be okay. You're safe. Those are some pretty powerful words for those children, probably right now at this exact moment, someplace in the world. I'm so grateful for this ministry, the team that is on the ground right now at those borders. They're reaching, they're rescuing, and we're restoring. That little girl asking, where would my life be? Where would their lives be? They want a better life. If we come together, we can offer them a better life, one life at a time. I know it seems enormous when you think of all the millions that are being trafficked right now that are being abused. Let's think of that one girl right now and to be able to look at her and say, you are safe because, because we are coming for you and we're gonna rescue you. We're gonna take you out of that place and we're gonna help show you a better life. You were made for something more than this and the enemy can't take from you one more thing from your life. We can come together, we know how. We know how to reach these girls, we know how to rescue them, and we know how to restore them back to their original identity and who they are in Christ. Randy, we've been doing this a long time. They are there right now on the ground. They just need us to come together to make it possible yeah, for them. Yeah, absolutely, and you, you, you hit it, because there's three aspects of this. One is to reach, and that is where we go in and we educate. We, we would rather prevent any kind of sex trafficking from ever happening. Mm -hmm. And so the reach goes in and speaks to that area yes. and, and, and educates people, it stops them at the border, mm -hmm. it gets them where they're never in a position to be abused. Yes. But unfortunately, as you know, yes. there are many young women who are in an abusive situation. And that's where we go in and we rescue them. And sometimes it means kicking down doors, mm -hmm. literally, Yes. but spiritually, there are many to be kicked down. And the yes. third aspect is right out of Jeremiah, right? We want to give them a hope yes, and, and a, a future. future. Amen. And that's the restore. All of these efforts do cost money. We have people on the ground. We have facilities. We have materials that need to go out. And so we, we, we look at it and we say, okay, how many are we reaching with the overall budget. And that's how we come up with these numbers where you say, okay, it costs about $128 to reach, rescue, or restore a child. I mean, a child's not a commodity. We know this, this is what we're fighting against. But to put it in terms that we can relate to, to say, okay, how far can my dollar go? Well, actually it can be doubled right now because mm -hmm. we have a matching gift, a $320,000 matching gift from some friends of the ministry have said, we'll, we'll match every dollar given which means a gift of $64 today will, will help basically reach, rescue, or restore one child. The more that we give, yes. the more that we can give. That's right. You know, the more you put in our hands, the more we can put into the field yes. to reach, rescue, and restore. Yes. So my prayer, Tammy, is that people would say, what can I do? What does God want me to do? Yes. Because I know that this is, uh, this is a mission directly from God. It is. This is a mission of heaven against hell yes. here on earth. Yes, it is. And we're all a part of fighting it. So would you just take a moment and say, God, are you putting something on my heart to do? Mm -hmm. And it may seem small, it may seem big, 
but all obedience is big to God. Mm -hmm. Every life changed is big to heaven. Yes. So take a moment and pray. And then if God leads, go online mm -hmm. and make the best gift you can, the one he puts on your heart. Mm -hmm. That's the best gift you can. Yeah. Innocent children and young people longing to be loved and cared for are being abducted and sold at the hands of violent predators, forced into the evil industry of human trafficking. Through Mission Rescue Life, you can reach out to warn children who are at risk for sex trafficking, rescue those already enslaved, and restore young lives and give them a future. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help reach, rescue, or restore one child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 Mission Rescue gift will be doubled to $64. With your gift today, we'll send you Declare. This beautifully designed 31-day devotional reveals 31 names of God from Scripture and gives insight to the character, grace, and depth of God's love for you. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the Gospels book set. This special edition collection of the four Gospels in the classic King James Version includes journaling space opposite each page of Scripture so you can reflect as you read, the perfect companion for your daily time with God. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help save 20 children, and you may request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Consider the Birds. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Let's reach, let's rescue, let's restore. We can only do it with your help, so I hope you are going online, going to the phone, making the best gift you can. And what a story today of reaching and rescuing and restoring. I mean, that's just amazing. I know some people want to follow up, Renee, and find out more. Where can they follow you, see the documentary, and maybe even support you guys? JesusChristStreetMinistry.com. That's it's simple. JesusChristStreetMinistry.com. I love it. That's it, the website. Love it. Gosh, a mighty man of God. Thank Amen. you. Thank, Thank you. you for listening to the voice Thank of God. You. Thank you all for having me. Thank everybody. you so much. Amen. And I hope today that you're able to listen even a little bit more, lean into the voice of God. He wants to build back hope in your life. It's capable. He is capable. Your life was meant for something more than just this. God bless you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Life Today. I know of no one who's done that more effectively than James has. Governor Mike Huckabee pays tribute next week. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.